my favourite novels of all time are the books by a Canadian author, which feature a girl with red hair and freckles, a tongue that runs away with her quite frequently, a wonderful imagination, and she lives in a place called Avonlea. The books, of course, are the Anne of Green Gables series by Ellen Montgomery. I first got Anne of Green Gables, and this is a fabulous annotated edition, which I can really strongly recommend. Uh, it was read to me by my mother. From that time on, she gave me Anne books when it was birthday or Christmas. I read them, I reread them, I reread them again. I finally got to see Prince Edward Island, which was an intensely emotional experience for me. And I still reread the books fairly frequently. This is my really old copy, my much loved and very battered copy of Anne of Green Gables. The cover sort of collapsed, so I stuck it in the front of the book because it still brought back lovely memories and I didn't want to lose the cover. I think what I learned from Anne of Green Gables was that it was actually all right to adore books, quote poetry, to fall in love with the natural world, to have imagination and to use it. And I learned so many lessons from reading Anne of Green Gables, reading it again and again and again. Gilbert Blythe was my very first love affair. I am still deeply in love with Gilbert Blythe. And the moment when finally Anne gets to marry Gilbert remains one of my favourite literary moments of all time. Anne of Green Gables was published in 1908, so it's well over 100 years old. Montgomery was a very keen writer and she'd been trying her hand at stories. And one day she jotted down in a notebook the idea of elderly couple wants to adopt orphan boy. By a mistake, a girl is sent to them. She noted about a year or so later that that was maybe a good idea for a novel, not just for a story. And she sat down and she wrote Anne of Green Gables, probably the most famous Canadian novel ever published. And it made her famous. Montgomery actually became rather sick of Anne. She got fed up with having to continually write books about Anne and she preferred some of her other heroines, such as Emily of New Moon. But the public adored Anne and they just wanted more and more of the Anne stories. You might notice behind me the bust of Mark Twain. He was one of the very early admirers of Anne of Green Gables and thought she had created a truly wonderful character in this red-headed imaginative orphan. So Montgomery went on to publish many more books about this fabulous character moving her through her life, her time as a teacher, her university education, her engagement to Gilbert, and finally Anne becomes a wife and then a mother. So the next book, which was published in 1909, was Anne of Avonlea. And this one describes Anne working as a teacher in Avonlea while looking after Marilla, the woman who has adopted her. This was never one of my top favourites amongst the Anne books. I enjoyed it, but it was not one of the ones I found I went back to again and again and again. Now, she then published two books of stories about Avonlea. And so correctly, this is where they come into the chronology, Chronicles of Avonlea and Further Chronicles of Avonlea. Anne, of course, does appear in some of the stories, but once again, they're not books that I return to. They were not ones that really won me over with, with Anne, and that they sort of flesh out the society of Avonlea, the, the gossip, the stories, the quirky and eccentric personalities, but they were not really the books that I absolutely adored. Now, the one that I really, I think, loved the most of the entire series was Anne of the Island. And uh, there you can see what the book looked like in its very first edition, that the postcard of the first edition of the novel. I adored Anne of the Island. And again, I've got my old cover stuck into the front of the book. Although intriguingly, that's Anne there in the picture and she does not have red hair. It looks black in the picture to me, but there she is with two of the friends that she is sharing a flat with as a university student. In this novel, Anne goes off to Redmond College and she becomes a student of the very best of all subjects, English literature. 
So uh, she shares a flat, uh, quite a, a modern thing for a young girl to be doing at that time. And many of the people in Avonlea question whether a girl should be getting a degree or not. And she proceeds to have various romantic entanglements. Gilbert Blythe has proposed and she has rejected him. She thinks that she falls in love with a man called Roy Gardner, but he is completely wrong for her. And I think all of us Anne fans are totally delighted when Roy proposes and Anne suddenly comes to her senses and says no. She is then a bit of a, at a bit of a loose end. She finishes her university degree. She's not really quite certain where her life is going to take her next. And uh, she thinks Gilbert is just a good friend. She doesn't really feel romantically involved with him. And yet he has set a standard for man that no other man can ever match. And then one terrible evening, Anne hears that Gilbert Blythe is dying. And she knows instantly that she is deeply in love with Gilbert and has been ever since that day when she cracked a slate over his head in the Avonlea classroom. Anne goes through a terrible night, wondering if Gilbert is going to survive. Fortunately, of course, he does. And at the end of Anne of the Island, and again, one of my favorite scenes of all time, Gilbert proposes in Hester Gray's garden and Anne says, yes. The night before my own wedding, I sat in my bed and I reread Gilbert's proposal from Anne of the Island, one of my favourite scenes ever. Now, Gilbert is a medical student and is still studying. They cannot yet afford to marry. So Anne ends up going off to uh, Sunnyside High School, where she's a teacher. In fact, she's actually the principal. Now, interestingly, this book was not written in the correct chronology. Anne of the Island came out in 1915, but Anne of Windy Willows, or Anne of Windy Poplars, as it was also published as, only came out in 1936. So there was such demand for another Anne story that Montgomery sort of went back and inserted that book into Anne's chronology. But the books were not written in the chronology of Anne's life uh, as we have them. So what she did actually write next before, well before the Windy Willows book was Anne's House of Dreams. At the beginning of this novel, Anne comes down the stairs of Green Gables as a beautiful bride and Gilbert is waiting there, absolutely thrilled at the bottom of the stairs. And they get married and they go off to live in the little place where he has been offered a job as a doctor. Anne has her first baby, which tragically dies. She becomes very friendly with a woman called Leslie, and uh, Leslie becomes a, an important character, or more important later on, uh, and her son becomes very important. So Anne's House of Dreams is a lovely novel showing the newlywed couple, and getting to know her new community, having moved away from Avonlea, hoping with the death of her first baby, and then the birth of her child, Jim, uh, or James, named after Captain Jim, another wonderful character in the series. And uh, there she is, we get to know her as a new wife and mother. Now, again, later on in Montgomery's life, when she was getting so many requests from her public to write more Anne books, she ended up writing Anne of Ingleside. So this one was her actually her last Anne book that she wrote, and it was published in 1939. And this book doesn't have quite so much Anne in it, but more all of her children. So the very dreamy and sensitive Walter, uh, Jem, of course, the twins, Diana and Nan, uh, young Rilla, the son Shirley. Uh, so this is about some of the sort of adventures of the various children. And again, you can see the original first cover and the picture that I kept from my own cover of the book. So I loved Anne of uh, Windy Willows and Anne of Ingleside, but I don't think they're quite as good as some of the others. Uh, you do get the sense that Montgomery was writing them because she had to, but because she kept getting these demands from, the, from her public, uh, rather than because she really wanted to sit down and write another Anne book. She then wrote Rainbow Valley, 
Uh, and this again is about Anne's children uh, growing up in Rainbow Valley, which is the valley next to their beautiful home of Ingleside. So again, we get further adventures of what the children all get up to. So again, another wonderful book about childhood, but perhaps not quite so much of Anne in it as a character. And then another one that is a very, very deep favourite of mine. Again, my copy is looking very battered indeed. The novel Rilla of Ingleside. Rilla, named for Marilla Cuthbert, is Anne's youngest daughter. She's got a lisp. She can't say the word yes properly. It comes out as yes. And Rilla is young and frivolous. She wants to flirt. She wants to go to parties and see her friends. And the First World War breaks out. Her brothers go off to the war and her brother Walter is tragically killed. I shed buckets of tears over Matthew Cuthbert's death in Anne of Green Gables, but also over Walter's death in Rilla of Ingleside. Rilla ends up adopting a little war baby that she has to take care of. She has to economize and cope with clothing coupons, and rations and things like that. And all the women in the book have to live with the dread of a telegram one day arriving and announcing the death of someone they love. I think that Rilla of Ingleside is one of the very finest novels about the First World War. We don't go to the trenches with the men, but we see the agony of the women who wait at home, knit socks, make up parcels to send to the men at the front and deal with the reality of living in a world at war. It's a wonderful book. Rilla falls for son of her mother's friend, Leslie. His name is Kenneth Ford, and he's a truly gorgeous hero. After Gilbert Blythe, I very rapidly fell in love with Kenneth Ford, and I actually ended up naming one of my sons after this hero. So at the end of the novel, Kenneth comes back to see Rilla. And he looks at her in a marvellous scene and the way in which the book ends is an absolutely superb ending to the book. There's Kenneth on the doorstep and he has always nicknamed her Rilla my Rilla. But this time he looks at her with a world of meaning in his eyes and he says, is this Rilla my Rilla? And poor Rilla in the supreme moment of her life finds that her lisp comes back and she says, yes. Yeah. It's such a marvellous moment in this book. If ever there's a fire in my house, the books that I'll be particularly, I think, rushing to save are my Anne of Green Gables books. They have changed and enriched my life. Getting to Prince Edward Island was the fulfilment of a dream. I've read critical books about them, and I'd like soon to do another YouTube post about the books about the Anne books which are really fascinating, and of course, biographies of Montgomery herself. But these are books that I deeply, deeply love. Anne of Green Gables has changed, improved, enriched, made me a very happy reader. And I hope that for the rest of my life, I will be delving into the wonderful world of Anne of Green Gables. I hope that you too are an Anne fan and uh, that you have enjoyed learning just a little bit more about this marvellous series of novels.